Welcome, everyone, and first of all, thank you for tuning in to another interview from The Non-Traditional Pharmacist. We're excited today for really another great interview. Um, we are honored to be joined by Dr. Jim Stevenson, a very influential person in the pharmacy world. Uh, Dr. Stevenson is currently the president of the Hospital and Health System Services Practices at Vizant Incorporated, a consulting company that shares cutting-edge pharmacy technology and best practices by people at the top of their fields to provide real and lasting solutions for their clients. It's a very cool role. Um, we're lucky to have Dr. Stevenson, and we certainly appreciate him taking the time out of his schedule to join us. So, Dr. Stevenson, thank you and welcome. I'm happy to be with you. Great. Thanks so much. And our first question that we like to ask our guests are, um, we like to get an explanation of the current role that um, they're in, but in your case, it might be interesting to hear your career path leading up to your current role and then some explanation around um, that current role and kind of your day-to-day -day activities. Sure. Yeah, I started out my career um, in an academic medical center as a clinical pharmacist and a faculty member, and from there I uh, progressed to become a director of pharmacy um, in an academic medical center, and then I progressed uh, I moved on to progressively larger positions um, in various academic medical centers and colleges of pharmacy. Um, and then I spent most recently 15 years as the chief pharmacy officer and associate dean uh, at the University of Michigan Health System and College of Pharmacy. And, you know, after doing that, uh, you know, I had a fantastic position at the University of Michigan as chief pharmacy officer and really enjoyed my time there. It was extremely rewarding, but I, I got to a point in my career where I was looking for some new challenges and, uh, you know, I, I felt like I had maybe 10 more years left in my uh, work career and um, was looking for something new. And through a, a variety of different circumstances, I had been talking to several of, co of my colleagues who were with this company, Vsant, who had been encouraging me to consider joining them. And uh, the time became right. I decided to uh, take on this role. And so, um, you know, I view it, viewed it as an opportunity to take a lot of the experience and, and knowledge that I had learned um, throughout my career and use it in a way to apply it to helping other colleagues across the country and actually across the world and helping them to improve their, their pharmacy programs. So as president of VSANT, um, I am involved in leading a team of consultants who work with hospitals and health systems to basically optimize their, their pharmacy and medication use processes and opportunities. Um, just a little bit about the company. We have about 70 consultants overall. Um, we, uh, we do work in the managed care space in the hospitals and health systems, which is where I primarily work. And also we work with pharmaceutical companies and technology companies trying to help them improve the value of their offerings, uh, mostly to the hospital and health system uh, customer base that they're, they're trying to appeal to. And we have offices here in the U.S. We also have an office in Canada as well as one in, in London. And so we're doing work in Canada, uh, the U.K., the Middle East, in addition to uh, here in the U.S., that's that's a very very interesting um, role and company, it, uh, and and so different from your career leading up to it. Is was it difficult for you personally to transition from the academic side to more of the industry consulting focus? Well, actually, it's you know it's maybe not as different as you might think because uh, you know again a lot of a lot of the pharmacy leaders and health system leaders around the country are dealing with the same sorts of issues and problems. And as I said, I had, um, I think, a lot of success in dealing with those uh, through my time in my career in Michigan. And so it, it gave me an opportunity to basically take that knowledge and expertise and help my colleagues. So it wasn't really that different. And even with our international business, um, while the healthcare systems and the processes are, are different, um, what I found is that through my international experience that all the health systems really are struggling with the same basic issues, and that is quality, cost, and access. And 
so, you know, it's been nice to be able to apply the principles and things that we've learned, um, not necessarily to say that, gee, you know, if you're in another country, you should do it the way we do it in the U.S., but, you know, often we can bring a different perspective or some different experiences and help them uh, find solutions that, that work well in their country. Right, right. Um, that's interesting. You mentioned the um, the, uh, the health systems that you've dealt with in the, your experience. Um, a lot of them, whether in the uh, United States or abroad, deal with the same problems and issues. Um, that kind of leads into our next question of, if you could just comment on the current state of the profession of pharmacy, the field of pharmacy in general, and kind of your take on the direction it's heading. Yeah, I think overall I'm very excited about um, the opportunities that we have in pharmacy. Um, I think there's a increasing role and recognition of the role of medications and potentially the role that pharmacists can play in impacting the overall healthcare system. Certainly with uh, you know all the expensive biologics and specialty drugs, uh, pharmaceuticals are making up a bigger component, a bigger percentage of healthcare spend in the United States. And, and if you look at it, you know the, the majority of patients, um, the, the treatment modality to deal with their disease state is medications. I mean, there are a lot of surgical procedures and things, but medications are the primary treatment modality for most uh, most patients out there. And because of the increased cost and complexity, I think it's, you know, creating a lot of new opportunities within pharmacy and for pharmacists. You know, my concern is that, um, that our colleagues recognize the importance of what's going on in the healthcare systems and that we take advantage of those opportunities. And that's, again, part of what what I try to do with our clients is to help them take advantage of those opportunities. Either, you know, if they don't see them, uh, we try to help outline what those opportunities are and give them a path forward. Or if they do see them, often they're so busy with their day-to-day uh, activities that it's hard for them to focus on new initiatives without some assistance. And so often we're in there to try to help accelerate the pace of change and, and help them uh, implement new programs. That's a great point. People, you know, wrapped up in their day-to-day responsibilities, sometimes it can be difficult to see where these potential opportunities may be. And and so it sounds like that's where you come in and uh, um, and, and that's where you are, provide the value to your clients. Where would you say new grads should look, new graduates, um, that is, for emerging roles and areas with high growth potential within the field of pharmacy? Yeah, um, I guess there's, there's several that I would, uh, I would highlight. Um, one is in the area of specialty pharmacy. Um, I think you're probably familiar with that term. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of focus on specialty pharmaceuticals and specialty pharmacy services right now. It's a very exciting area. And, uh, you know, there's projections that within the next several years, uh, 50% or more of the healthcare spend in pharmaceuticals will be in the area of specialty drugs. Wow. So it's going to be playing a, a larger and larger uh, role in our overall uh, healthcare system. So sure. that, that's an important one. Another area that I think is uh, really important is in uh, personalized medicine or precision medicine, pharmacogenomics. I think there's uh, growing uh, information about the potential role of using this um, genetic information to better use, select, dose, and and, uh, use medications in populations to get better outcomes. And so I think that's a, uh, an emerging area that's, that's very exciting and, and has some great opportunities uh, for pharmacists. Um, I think another area that I would highlight is in the area of informatics. Um, with the growth of information and the need for us to reduce variation in our practices in the healthcare system, um, I think if you look at the information systems that we use today, um, they're very crude, uh, very underdeveloped, and so I believe that um, 
there's a tremendous potential to improve and develop information systems that integrate clinical decision support rules and things in a much more effective way than we are today um, that will help ultimately improve the cost and quality of, of care for our patients. Okay, great. Yeah, those are all, and those are all, um, you know, things that we're interested in and, and want to take a look at further um, and kind of, you know, build the exposure and, and uh, knowledge base around those roles. What advice would you give to people interested in um, pursuing non-traditional roles? Well, I think um, the advice I would give is to, you know, try to do what I think you're doing with your website, um, which is to try to explore um, new and emerging roles. You know, don't just close your eyes to those things and focus on the traditional roles that are out there. And there's nothing wrong with traditional roles. I think a lot of the traditional roles are going to uh, continue for a long time into the future. But if you're really interested in some of these other areas, um, I think you really have to uh, reach out, talk to people who are, who are sort of leading the way in these areas and get some exposure so you can understand what the opportunities are. And at the same time, I think you're probably going to need to educate yourself uh, because these are areas that aren't um, really taught very well in traditional pharmacy school curriculum. In fact, right now, um, we're just in the process of, of starting a new specialty pharmacy elective course at the University of Michigan because a number of us felt strongly that that we really hadn't uh, exposed our students to that. You know, it's a very important component of where the healthcare system is going. So we're trying to catch up and, and, and improve our uh, educational offerings to students. But you know, if you think about the three areas I mentioned, uh, I don't think you would uh, feel like you came out of pharmacy school really having adequate knowledge to, to really pursue those. So you're gonna have to take the initiative on your own network with other people, people who are uh, leading in those areas, and potentially find ways to expand your knowledge base if that's an area that you want to pursue. Yeah, that's such a great point. You know, that's that's kind of our ultimate goal with our, uh, with, you know, our project, the non-traditional pharmacist, um, and what we've been Telling people that you know that's that's the best way to to gain exposure to these different roles and different opportunities is to reach out and talk to people that have done it or are doing it and um, and kind of gaining advice from people that have have lived the role that they're interested in. Um, yeah, and actually, I you know the other thing I would say is that, um, and you've probably heard this before, but if you look at people who are at various points further on in their careers in pharmacy and you talk to them. Um, the vast majority of them are not doing something that they thought they would be doing right out of mm. school. And, um, you know, I'm a great example of that. I, I came out of school in my training thinking that I was going to be a clinical pharmacist and a, uh, a clinical faculty member. And that's how I started out. Um, I, but I had no real interest in pharmacy administration, pharmacy management leadership. Um, but I saw things, I, uh, opportunities arose, and my career path changed, and I had to learn a lot of things along the way in order to be successful. And I think that's fairly typical of, of most people. So, um, you know, I think it, it points to the importance of continually learning and trying to stay up with things that are developing in the profession so that you're prepared to uh, maybe move in a new direction as you see these opportunities develop. Right, right. Yeah, and it's it's a good point because uh, you, I mean you're you you personally are a great example of of the non traditional pharmacist. I mean taking a, a traditional path early and then transitioning um, later in your career. So it, I think it's a great model for everyone. And and uh, and thanks for sharing all your stories with us. Um, that's all we have, Dr. Stevenson. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I guess I would just say I, I, I'm really impressed that you're taking this on and encouraging people to look at non-traditional roles. As, as I mentioned, I think there's a lot of non-traditional roles that are going to be emerging uh, in our profession and in the healthcare system. And so um, people who are entrepreneurial or very inquisitive and really want to make a mark uh, in a new way um, will have a lot of opportunities uh, in front of them. And so 
it's important to find an area that excites you, something you want to spend time in and really try to make an impact on the profession and on the healthcare system and on your patients. And so uh, I, I uh, applaud you for, for trying to open people's eyes to different opportunities in pharmacy. Boy, we really appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, and thanks again for taking the time this morning. Um, it's a, I think it was a great uh, interview, and, and hopefully everyone will learn as much as we did um, listening back to this. So I appreciate it again. And uh, I'll provide your contact information if it's okay um, at the conclusion of the thing when we, when we post um, online, if that works. Certainly. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.